the clocks have gone back an hour, the nights are drawing in. So what better to kick off November football than a Tuesday night trip to the city ground against our old foes Nottingham Forest as the Blades look to bounce back from Saturday's defeat to Blackpool. Nottingham, of course, is the birthplace of the greatest stat man ever to have lived. Well, that's me. On to the game, three changes for the Blades, a long, long, long overdue appearance for Chris Basham, in my opinion. Uh, Bash absolutely had to come in when Davis was missing and great to see Bash showing that passion, commitment and he really was a standout performer in the first half. Uh, out of the cold came Rianne Brewster. Uh, could we get fireworks as we approach firework night from Rianne? And Jaden Bogle came in uh, to replace George Baldock who dropped to the bench. Uh, Oliver McBurney, a bit like his Twitter account, is now missing for a short while. On to the game, and there really is nothing to report. Uh, uh, possession, yes. Cutting edge, no. Looking dodgy at the back, perhaps so. Nottingham Forest, Nottingham itself, the home of Robin Hood. We've got Robin Olsen. I always worry when the ball goes near him. Uh, it wasn't very convincing at all. I mean, possession doesn't win you games. There was no cutting edge. Forrest were there for the taking. Um, a Jaden Bogle effort straight at the goalkeeper, sort of five minutes before the break. That's about the best we could muster up. Um, two needless bookings. Uh, Ollie Norwood uh, giving away a foul and then his mouth got him into trouble. Uh, and uh, Lee Smooth say with an innocuous challenge. Neither were bookings, really. I think the referee was just bored. Um... Uh, yet again, another disappointing first half. I covered the first half at Barnsley, had nothing to report, and the second half was tremendous. We went on to win the game by three goals to two, so here's hoping that we could do something very much similar. Um, Forrester there for the taking. Uh, possession football, but overall a dismal first half all round. Not very interesting, nothing much to report. Half-time, Nottingham Forest nil, Sheffield United nil. Hiya, yeah, so thoughts from me on second half. I thought we came out looking really well. Um, my main concern was that we always come out looking really well for the first 10 minutes or so, um, and then it seems to fall away from there. Um, but we kept on it. I thought we were looking pretty decent overall um, in the first half as well. Our passing has just been so much quicker um, than it has been recently. They've got less time to think and rearrange themselves. Uh, we're actually putting some decent tackles in. Um, it's usually the story that we've got loads of possession, but we're not actually doing anything with it. Um, but it looked like it were going to um, we we're going to get creating some chances there, which we did. Um, the link up from um, from Sharp and Gibbs White before round, you could see him pointing to where he wanted the ball. Billy were already on it; he'd already got it in, and you you just can't argue with that. It were were brilliant. That's what what we need more of. Um, but same old story as usual. We just can't hold on to a lead. And another soft goal, grabbing, nobody there around him in six-yard box, just absolutely criminal. And just like that, we've uh, we've given it away again. Um, before the start of the match, I would have took a point, but it's, um, it's just disappointing that that's obviously the way that it's played out. But overall, I think we are looking a lot better. Um, obviously, Brewster missed his chance later on, I'm not too sure. Um, just where he fits, how he fits, what he's got to offer us. Um, you know, he's obviously a decent footballer, but we're, we're yet to see a lot from him, to be fair. It was great to see Bash back. He looked like he was loving life. Um, and, and Gibbs White just every match seems to uh, seems to impress me more. So we've just got to see where we go from here. Um, but it's these soft goals um, that are costing us. Um, they, they did what we didn't do on Saturday and they came back and they responded. So... You know you can't really argue with that, but we need to be prepared for it, and uh, and we weren't, and we've it's cost us again. So fingers crossed, we can. Uh, you know we've actually got something to build on. It's definitely not pissed me off as much as Saturday did, which is something. Um, and we'll just have to see where we go from here. Hiya, Blades. Another disappointing result for us today. Um, I think the main takeaway is it's just so boring, isn't it, at the minute? Um, last ten fifteen minutes did liven up, but. Obviously, not quite in the way we would want. Um, so, player ratings for a relatively disappointing 1-1 draw with Forrest. So, starting in net with Olsen, I've gone a 4.5. I think he had a couple of shaky moments first off. His kicking wasn't quite there. In terms of the 
you know, Forest haven't had any chances, he's not had any saves to make. In terms of the goal, he can't, I don't think he can expect to do much more in terms of the shot and making the save. I just don't know if he could be more proactive in reacting to the cross, but that might be being harsh on him. Um, it's not his fault that there's somebody completely unmarked in the middle of the box, is it? Um, but a 4.5, because I didn't think it was his best game. Um, and I'm not sure he's had his best game for us yet, if I'm being honest. Um, in terms of the defence, Bogle, I've gone for a 5. Um, thought he was steady. Don't think he did anything particularly wrong defensively. Can he get out and stop the cross quicker? Potentially. Um, but for the most part, I thought he was solid. He had a little bit of a dangle of the leg, uh, middle of the second half which fortunately doesn't make contact, and then a really good chance first off. I'm not sure we could expect him to do loads better, um, but yeah, probably our best chance of the first half fell to Bogle. Um, at least it was a shot on target. Across the defence, so if we go for Basham, I've given him a six. Thought it was possibly our man of the match, particularly first off, I thought he stood out, he was composed on the ball, he was bringing it forwards. Um, I thought he had a, had a pretty good game, to be honest, coming into the team. Um, it's nice to see him back. Obviously, would like to see a little bit more of him. Um, but yeah, thought it was steady from him today. Next to him, Egan. I've gone for a five. Um, don't think it was his best game today. We weren't under lots of pressure. You know, Forrest weren't streaming at us. They weren't coming at us. Um, but he handled most of what he had to do pretty securely. Again, there's a real organisation problem in that defence, particularly for the goal. There's a massive gap between our two centre halves and I think it's Egan's the senior centre half he should be organising us he should be making sure that's not the case and maybe even stepping across to make sure he's covering that player um, so I've given him a five I'm not laying blame at his door but maybe he could do a little bit better in games like tonight when we're not under that much pressure and we're still managing to concede Stevens at left back I've also gone for a five I think first off he was probably our main outlet in terms of getting forward unfortunately he doesn't have that composure for the final ball and I think a lot of the frustration is that he gets the ball in such fantastic positions and generally it's from really good play and he himself contributes to some really nice play but his final ball just isn't there and it's so frustrating and then I think second half you know he wasn't as much going forwards and potentially on the goal again he gets beaten out on his wing before it then comes across for the ball into the box and maybe could do a little bit better so I've given him a five I think he had some bright spots but also quite a bit of frustration into midfield, Norwood and Fleck, I think we controlled the game. So I think Norwood, I think it was a decent game from today. I've gone for a five. You know, he's not creating chances. He's not incisive and really driving us forwards. But he did help us really get a control of that midfield. I think if he could just improve that little bit more in terms of sort of defence splitting passes, in terms of creating chances, maybe we'd be a better team. Maybe it really would help us push forward and we would be playing at a higher tempo and really starting to batter teams when we're on top like we were for so much of tonight next to him Fleck I've gone five exactly the same for the same reason you know I think he's involved in nice play I think he's really part of a team performance where we are dominating possession but their lack of being able to go forward and break the lines really does limit us in terms of chances that we're going to create when we're at our best Fleck is driving forwards he's beating his man and he's being creative and I just don't think we got that from him today um so five for Fleck in front of them so Brewster I've got no idea how to mark him because he's barely involved in games. And then when he is involved, he either does something that you can't quite understand the decision making or you think, oh, it was nearly good. Um, I've gone for a 4.5. He has that fantastic chance at the end. And I just don't know why he's not just stuck his laces through it and battered it towards the net. He's tried to place it and he's ended up just passing it to the keeper. Um, it's a shame first off, you know, like I said, he wasn't massively involved, but he did put one fantastic cross in across the box. And I just don't think anybody anticipated it. And then second off, he did make a couple of decent sort of defensive track backs. Um, but overall, we're just not getting enough from him still. It's the same thing we say whenever he plays. Um, so 4.5 for Brewster. In the middle, Gibbs White, I've gone 5.5. I thought he started the game really brightly. I think when we had a quite a fast first 15 minutes he was central to that I then thought he completely went out of the game uh, for the majority of the rest of it if I'm being honest but it's some really nice play and whenever we do create and we move fast going forwards because that's when we're at our best it's quick it's one two touch football and it's playing quickly through the lines pass and move and he really did create that so well with Billy where he gets the ball lays it out to him and then makes that run into the box gets beyond his man so he can tuck it home it's a really nice goal and he was really instrumental so a 5.5 and I think that goal really does show what he brings to the team even on a day like today where he's not really brought what his usual game is on the left Osborne I've gone for a 
4.5. Um, again, just don't think he was particularly involved. I don't think he was helping us create chances. I don't think he was really adding to putting pressure on the Forest box and really looking to be creative. Um, so a little bit of a disappointing game from him today. Um, and obviously, once he goes off, I do think that made us a little bit better if the game did then become a little bit more open and maybe did cost us defensively because he offers us so much more than just the attack. Um, and I think that can be underrated from time to time. And then up front, Moussa, I've gone for a four. Um, just didn't really look interested, I didn't think. Um, barely touched the ball. Um, he had one really good opportunity where he spun his man, he's running through and gets pulled back. Um, I think they like, got booked for it. But yeah, just for the most part, he's just not involved, didn't really look interested. Yeah, not a game for him today. Maybe he's just played a little bit too much football in the last few weeks. Um, so we shall see. In terms of the subs, so the first one, Njai came on for Muse, and I thought Njai looked quite tidy in patches. Um, I think he is a real talent, you know, he's got such good feet, he can beat a man, he can pick a pass. Um, I don't think it was, obviously, his greatest game today. I don't think he was central to a lot of work or creating chances, but he looks busy, he looks involved, and certainly coming on for Muse, you saw how much more involved he was in the game. He was coming deep, picking up the ball, trying to beat his man, and just trying to get us a little bit of a spark. Um, so I thought a sort of 5.5 for Njai. I thought he was a decent sub and I thought he did well when he came on. The next sub was Billy Sharp coming on. Uh, he came on for Osborne and I thought that actually did help us. I think he offered us a lot more in that centre forward role. He holds the ball up well. Um, and I thought he did show a real moment of quality to try and create the goal. What I was saying earlier about Stevens is he's not got that composure to pick the pass. Whereas when Gibbs White feeds it into Sharp, he then manages to just take a breath He's moving forwards, he sees where Gibbs White wants the ball and he plays a pass across. It's not an unaimed boot across the box into a defender to try and win a corner. It's not a pullback to a decent area where we don't know if anybody's there. He's picked out a man and Gibbs White then tucks it away. And it just shows that little bit of extra quality that we really need when we're trying to create and when we're trying to really put the pressure on teams. So I've gone for a six for Sharp. thought he did well coming off the bench today. And then how Rahan, you know, he wasn't really on long enough to merit a score so if you're giving him one five but <laughs> he didn't do very much in terms of the manager slav it's a difficult one to judge today i think he got it right from the start you know we were putting on lots of pressure he did sort of give us a game plan that meant we could dominate the game as we do in lots of ways but we've still not addressed some of the fundamental issues that we've got in the side at the moment which is that you know we're not massively creative when we are on top like that and we do ship such easy goals I'm not sure it's all down to him, obviously, but we've got to work on something in terms of defensive organisation, in terms of attacking movement and the speed at which we are trying to play. I'm going to give him a five, um, but certainly think he's got things to be working on and thinking about in terms of how we're going to develop this side going forwards. But, you know, a disappointing result. I'm quite frustrated. Um, but we move on and to Blackburn on Saturday and fingers crossed for a better performance. Up the blades. Ah, uh, thanks, Solly. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a dis disappointment, wasn't it? Another, another bad night for Sheffield United. Really, it's, it feels like we actually lost, giving away that 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 lead that we had that we kind of didn't deserve, and we thought we were going to smash and grab, and grab it came, didn't it? Grab him, always him, it's always him. Um, positives and negatives. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, I mean, it was a scrappy game. It was a it was a really poor game against it, two struggling shockingly arranged um, championship sides who really don't look, don't look like they know how to play football, to be honest. There was no coherence in our side whatsoever. No forward attacking play that actually meant anything. First 10 minutes, same old, same old. You know, it was that, um, oh, don't we look wonderful? But there was nothing happening. Um, but we did come away with a point, which I suppose is a positive. Hooray, one point when we could have been three. Um, you know, at least we didn't lose. There's another positive. Yeah, well done. Um, but the big positive of the night was to see the return of uh, Chris Basham. Uh, what a composed head on the ball we have in Chris Basham. He's wonderful, isn't he? He can do anything. He just drifts through midfield. He just drifts into midfield. He drifts forward. People are just watching him go past. And, and we missed that for so long. I don't know what Slav's been thinking about, just sort of dropping him and not playing him whatsoever. But he's certainly better than Davies. And he's certainly better than anything else. Even it does, does mean that Egan has to go to, uh, to left side of, uh, of the uh, centre. Um, Norwood, I thought, had a fairly decent game, and that's you know coming from me. I'm I'm not really a Norwood fan, but I didn't think see any Hollywood balls into nowhere. 
every single pass he made was it was a quite a positive one. You know, it went he actually found feet. Um, and he didn't seem to get mussed off the ball. But then again, Forrest allowed us a lot of space all over the pitch, didn't they? They didn't really hassle us. They didn't really kind of close us down or anything. So he had a bit of an easy game, really. Right the way alongside him, though, um, you know, I can't say that for the rest of the midfield. They were pretty abject, really. But um, I thought that Morgan Gibbs-White showed a little bit of uh, endeavour, as he ever does. You know, he's, he's always trying to move forward. You know, he's always trying to get get positive with the ball and move the ball into the areas where it's going to hurt the opposition. But he's on his own most of the time, isn't he? Everybody else is just not reading him. Everything else that we do is 90 degrees to what Morgan Gibbs White or, or and I actually want to do. And it's that's that's the, the story of our game at the moment. It's not very cohesive. Uh, the negatives, we're just unable to hold on to a lead, aren't we? We're just unable to actually manage the game out. You know, Forrest just came back at us and they just kept coming back at us. As soon as Lewis Graham came on, you just knew that he was going to score. And, and score he did, you know, with an empty penalty area. Nobody going for the ball, the, the rebound, it was a fluke. It just bounced up. He knocks it past the keeper. And everybody's just stood around looking at each other thinking, well, how did that happen? Well, it's pretty obvious. You weren't concentrating. You lost the bubble. Um, right in the centre of the park and, and, and down the left-hand side, that was shockingly poor. Stevens, Fleck... And Brewster over the other side, my life, the sitter that he missed at the end, smacking it straight into the keeper's gloves. He just has to kneel down and pick the ball up. Mate, you're 23, 23 and a half million pounds of the player. You know, you're our most expensive signing and you still haven't scored a league goal. Get your head on, please. Come on. It was, but all over the park, negatives, negatives, negatives. Yes, poor sloppy play, uh, unable to sort of connect with each other. Where are we going, Sheffield United? Where are we going? The January transfer window is looks like a million miles away, doesn't it? And we've got a hell of a lot of games to play before then, including Blackburn uh, next, which is really going to be a telling game. Um, yeah, so there's uh, positives and negatives, I'm afraid. And over to Evie now for uh, for where do we go from here? Thanks a lot, Pompier. Up the Blades. So where do we go from here then, Blades? Well, I can tell you where we're not going, and that is anywhere fast. We're just incredibly frustrating, aren't we? Um, that seems to be the word that I describe United as um, for the last couple of seasons, frustrating. As we all seem to get ourselves in great positions, in actual play and on the scoreline and the situation of the match, and we somehow seem to throw them away nearly every time. You know, we, we showed some promising stuff today, um, again, attacking-wise um, and in the midfield, but... It's almost as if we can't get into that extra gear to put teams away. Um, and again, we decided that we were going to do what we do most of the time is do something really stupid in defence that I don't really understand why we do it because every single goal we concede is our fault. Like, I can't remember a goal that I genuinely feel that we couldn't have done more to stop. Um, for ages now, literally every single goal we've conceded is our own doing or you know it's not getting closer to a player or it's just leaving players free or passing about silly at the back you know what I mean or goalkeeper errors like it's some of that really needs to look at because every single <laughs> defensive player this season has been poor um, Egan has become a bit of a soft touch Basham did not have a good game today you can understand why maybe he isn't as involved as we'd like him to Davies again hasn't been dominant we need a proper Centre half come in, and it's slightly worrying that Slavs only bothered about getting another defensive midfielder in and wingers. Even though we need both of them things, we need to sort out this defensive side of our game because whether we play well up the other end of the pitch, if they can't keep them out, then it doesn't matter what we do up the end of the pitch because they're going to count for naught. So, yeah, the table doesn't lie at the end of the day, Blades, and we are where we are because we're just not a very good team at the moment, and we need to get going soon. Otherwise, it could be a very tough season. But we'll see how it goes and we'll see you all next time up the blades.